the shade and the sunlight gather in pools. There are trees to the right, twisted and wild. To my left is the sea, like a glimmering eye. Well, I'm not the first one, and I won't be the last who's come to this crossroads and breezed on past. With my destination, my only concern One foot on the gas as the yellow light turns And there's nothing like being alone at twilight The ocean and I each approaching high tide Held aloft on the waves of my pride Better off walking alone Twilight. My lover is steady, and he tells me be still and take a deep breath. He's hoping I will, but my mind keeps on racing till I'm far out of sight at the end of the road on the threshold. Twilight Well the sun's gone down And the twilight has passed And that magic hour It never lasts It's a long strand of pearls One that I Then I lay down to rest And that takes just a bit of this weight off my chest But the years stretch before me, I admit that it's true This restless pursuit is what I'm called to do And there's nothing like being alone at twilight The ocean and I each approaching high Oh, shoot, the cover music is still on. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, no, You're no. Right. Uh-oh. Oops. You know, thank you, someone. <laughs> thank you, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Sound bleak. Can't hear you. Let's try that again, okay. shall we, Freebo? Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, so glad I figured out how to do that. Yeah. I'm getting too fancy for my own good. As we were saying... Tonight, we get to just interview each other uh, on this episode of Inside Live, which is crazy uh, to say it's the 16th, 16th episode. Yeah. I had to count today. We started the first week of September. Wow. So now, We have no idea what we're going to ask each other. And, you know, we've got our chat right here. 
And if you guys have some questions for us, uh, we're happy to answer them. Yeah, please. So this please. is interactive. It's Throughout great, the you know? show, um, you guys definitely send in your questions for us. And also, please send in your song requests because I will be keeping an eye on them. Uh, as the show goes on. And if you're not in the chat, uh, hopefully you can figure out how to do it. Uh, it's, it's really nice to have you on there. It's not just that we can see you, or we can see you, we can hear what you're saying, but uh, also you can get to talk to each other, which is kind of cool. So it kind of creates a community. So uh, if you don't know how to do it, uh, well, I don't know how to help you out. I'm not Mr. Technical here, Alice is. They know how. They know how. I don't worry about it. Okay. Thank you, Janice. I'm glad you like my outfit. Um, this is my Christmas yeah. shirt. I got this uh, at a vintage store. It's very sparkly. All right, I'm gonna play a song. Yeah, what are you gonna play? I'm gonna play Bring It On Home. Oh, when you didn't write. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Nice mm -hmm. to see you coming yeah. on here. Hey, Toby. Thank you, Wallace. Hey, James. Watching from Ireland, I know, and, and Sam. And, and somebody sits there Sam watching from all. Newfoundland, which is I nice. Know. And thank Trevor, you thank you all for yeah. commenting in the chat. We, we really love seeing your comments come in, except when I look at them while I'm singing and then I forget what I'm doing. But besides that. 
And Elizabeth Barney, a friend from my hometown, home area. <laughs> oh, thanks, Vincent. Cold country in Pennsylvania. Oh. Well, hey, um, may I ask you a question, Frivo? Yeah, I was going to ask you <laughs> one, but I'll save it. Uh, Since yeah, you mentioned me. coal country, oh, um, I just I would like to ask you uh, yeah. where you grew up and kind of how you first became aware that you uh, had a musical inclination. Um, what about your your kind of family upbringing? How did how did that influence your your musicality and yeah, tell me a little bit about where you come from. Oh, well, that, that's a great question. I know you know some of the answers, I mean, but, yeah. but for our television I could probably audience, ghostwrite your book at this point, but yeah, I'm going to pretend could. I don't know for the purposes yeah. of this show. Uh, and, and you'd probably write it a lot better than I. But <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I grew up in a little coal town, eastern Pennsylvania, Mahanoy City, Pennsylvania. Uh, Mahanoy City. Mahanoy Where City. is that? Well, uh I, it might still be on the map. When I was born, there were 15,000 people. When I graduated high school, there were 10,000. Now there are maybe 5,000. Uh, wow. Obviously, hard coal, coal country, and uh, a depressed area. A lot of wonderful, honest people. Uh, I, I love that area. I'm really glad I grew up there. And my musical background was uh, uh, my family played a, a lot of classical music, hmm. and I'm really grateful for that. And uh, they really enjoyed shows. They would go to shows in New York. Hmm. Uh, musicals like mm. a lot of the Oscar and uh, Hammerstein, Rogers and Hammerstein stuff. Mm. And uh, I was privileged. They took me at one point to see the uh, uh, original cast of West Side Story. Oh, my York. gosh. Leonard Bernstein's incredible wow. music. And so I'm somewhere between classical music, uh, show tunes, uh, the early stuff with uh, Frank Sinatra. Mm. Uh, there were marches around the hometown, so there were John Philip Sousa marches. And I always liked to. I always wanted to march in the parade, and finally got to got to do that in uh, in high school. I took up the tuba and played in a high school band. So mm. those John Philip Sousa marches are part of me. And uh, my parents also turned me on to Louis Armstrong, which was you know, a little bit in New Orleans and jazz. And and uh, in high school, over the mountains, filtered some of the uh, some of the early rock and roll, like uh, Fats Domino and the Coasters, which is also New Orleans, mm. and, uh, and Little Richard and uh, Chuck Berry, and of course then then classic the stuff, classic stuff, and then I was, I was good on your parents for for really making sure that I know you've told me a lot about your mom, um, you know, and some of her efforts to like make you a cultured young person. She did, and she, I feel like my my parents did something similar where I'm, yeah. I'm just so grateful to them for, for, you know, introducing me to their music, not just to quote unquote, like kids music, but, but I think you don't give kids enough credit when you just give them, you know, they, I think kids can take in a lot. Um, and that's, that's so important that you had that influence growing up from your mom. I did. And it really is important. And I know a bit about, you know, your influences and in, in your parents, because uh, for the folks out there in, in terms of how uh, Alice and I met, I met her at a Folk Alliance co conference. And so basically she presented herself to me as a folky. Mm -hmm. That's the, you know, we're all... We, we, that's, we're all that's my roots for you know, sure. Well, we're all perceived in how we present ourselves, right? So she presented, she was, it was a folk conference. I think it was a folky. And uh, as we started working together, uh, I heard her just kind of singing around and she'd sing some blues stuff. And I said, "What's that?" You know, it's just some muddy water stuff. And I went, "What? You, 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 you little folky, you singing muddy waters?" And so, and she told me how her parents had played muddy and and Taj Mahal and and then the early folk stuff. So, what are some of your early musical influences? <laughs> I thought you were just going to start listing them. <laughs> um, well, that's that's a good start there. My mom, um, my mom loved the blues. I give my mom a lot of credit. Uh, she she wasn't the singer in the family. Like my father had the singing voice, but she loves music and she was always playing a really eclectic mix of vinyl. I mean, I grew up on vinyl. My parents had a huge collection and I know that was kind of unusual for my generation, but like we had my grandmother's records um, and my parents' records. So it was sort of a, a, just such a range, you know, everything from, some classical, but my mom loved like Sonny Terry and Brownie mm -hmm. McGee and, and, and Mississippi John Hurt and Taj um, and Muddy Waters and that stuff was just, oh, and she loved Josh White. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So kind of that. And then she also loved Joan Baez and, and my dad loved Joni Mitchell and Jackson Brown and some of them were like Southern California singer songwriters. So I feel like I got a mixture of like that folk and blues. Um, so that, that, yeah, that was huge for me. Well, and also the stuff that, you know, that Joan did, because I know a lot of, a lot of your influence of the early ballads, you know, just uh, Celtic, because you have some Celtic in your, in your vocal repertoire. Yeah. And where, where did that come from? There's, exactly? I think of a singer um, named Jean Redpath, who is a Scottish singer that my mom really loved. I don't know if any of the listeners have heard of her. I, I don't think it's a, a really, um, I don't think she was hugely famous but she just has like this classic scottish brogue that she sings in and um i always just had like such a good memory for lyrics Mm. and and words of songs yeah (laughs) like my mom tells me i would just recite like full poems Mm. you know to her like i couldn't read but i would like remember them and recite them so Mm. um (laughs) these comments are amazing right now (laughs) I'm loving you guys. There, there was a couple really good questions, actually. I, I want to make sure to come back oh, to them yeah, yeah. Um, in particular. But um, Well, you have a really good memory. You should Right. Do but that. as I was saying, like I would hear stuff that my parents would, sh- would, would play for me, and I would just remember it. So then I, I didn't need to be able to play an instrument, because, which I didn't start doing until much later. But um, you know, when you sing and you remember the words, you can just kind of get by with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, no, like I said, it, it's interesting how all these early influences that we grew up with, uh, they filter inside you. Like somebody mentioned about being a sponge, mm-hmm. and you know, and we are. And you know, uh, I, I like to say, I mean, there's only in music, there's only twelve notes. So in a way, there's nothing original about the vocabulary, but yeah. it's all it's all how you put them together. So when you put together the notes, the phrases. Um, the lyrics, you know, you do come up with original stuff, but what f- what f- what filtered into you along the way is incredibly influential. Yeah, and uh, especially growing up in in America, where this is a melting pot on so many yeah. different levels, that the the stuff that we do now, when I look back at all the influence I had, I mean, there's a little bit of Stravinsky, Beethoven. Louis Armstrong, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Joni Mitchell, Bob Dylan, uh, Little Richard. I mean, it just goes on and on. Yeah. And uh, it, it's fascinating how it all comes together. Yeah, it really is. What are some of the questions? That you, oh, I just, you know, you? maybe we'll come back to one. You, you should play, play a music? song. Yeah. Should I? You want to play some bass on something? Oh, God, I hope I know it. Uh, well, let's play something that you do know it on. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you remember uh, personal GPS? I do, okay. I do. Little, Guys, I gotta practice, okay? Little, I'm little, telling you. A little blues for you. I I, I wait um I wait until until the show to pick up the bass. It's not a not a good way to go. Um, you know, I wish I had some kind of a foot pedal for my camera switcher, but I just want to prove to you guys that um, I can in fact switch cameras, but I can't do it while I'm also playing the bass. But maybe someday. I'll rig up some kind of contraption. I'll leave it on us for, for now. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, and uh, Toby said, uh, said photogenic mind, which you actually do, because I know that your memory is pretty much about what you what you see. You mean, uh, do you mean Vincent saying, do you mean Vincent photographic? Said that, yeah. No, he well, said photogenic, actually. That's, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, you guys. Thank you. Oh my God! Sam Hill said, "Turn up the bass so we can tell when you miss a note." No, I will not. Oh, there should be plenty of bass, but let 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 us let us know what it is. Oh so. my God, Australia! Wow! Oh my gosh! Oh yes, and oh, someone asked if you went to college. Yeah, somebody said Swarthmore. I yes. did. I went to Swarthmore. I went to a lot of different colleges. <laughs> Oh yeah. I just, did you, you know, did you graduate from any of them? I did. I actually graduated from music school. Believe it or not. Really? Yeah, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Do you, just, do, do you need a degree to uh, to become oh, a musician? Oh, you, you, have, you need a degree to do this, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we, we couldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be allowed on the air. they got to give you a certification. Yeah, got to have a Doctor of rock and roll. Rock and roll doctor. PhD, PhD in, in swing. Bebop. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, shall we? So, yeah, in ter- terms of uh, derivation of songs, it, uh, here's an interesting conglomeration of of the music of blues, you know, and I didn't grow up with, with blues. There were no blues in Mahanoy City, Pennsylvania. It was polkas and 
and um, and Patty Page oh and things God. like that, and some early rock and roll. I, I didn't really get turned on to blues until I wound up being in a rock and roll band in Philadelphia as an electric band, and uh, the Paul Butterfield Blues Band uh, were some of our favorites, uh, Albert King, and uh, and so I, I I got schooled in the the uh, the vocab the musical vocabulary of blues, and when I started writing lyrics. Uh, with some of the work that I've done, you know, just some of the spiritual work and things that I, I kind of started getting into the, you know, what, what makes us tick, looking in the proverbial mirror, and uh, came up with this idea that, uh, that we all have an inner guidance system, you know, and I, it's my personal GPS. And it's a song that I wrote with my good friend Karen Taylor Good. So it's a little combination of new age and blues. It goes like this. Tell you about my angel, the one you never see, my everyday companion living deep inside of me. She guides me through the trenches, she gets me out of every mess. She my Bible, she my buddy, she my personal GPS. Well, she leads me on the journey, she leads me to the goal. She's always on the money, never leaves me in the cold. And every time I listen, I wind up being truly blessed. She ain't my Bible, she ain't my buddy, she ain't my personal GPS. I'm at the fork in the road, I gotta make a choice. There's so much going on, I don't Make a wrong turn, I'm feeling lost and afraid. Then I hear my angel calling, recalculate. Well, I got to pay attention. It's powerful stuff. I gotta turn it on, and I gotta turn it up. Cause every time I do it, you know I'm guaranteed success. She my buddy, she my personal GPS. Play boy. Drifting in the dark, will I ever find a harbor? I don't see it on the chart. Will something say no? Someone else is whispering, yes, yes, yes. 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 She ain't my Bible, she ain't my buddy, she ain't my personal GPS. She ain't my Bible, she ain't my buddy, crystal clear and never muddy. She ain't my Watson. She's my tunnel, never tardy, always pronto. She's my Sherpa, she's my guide, never runs and never hides. She's truly awesome, she's the best. She's my personal GPS. My personal GPS. My personal GPS. close that's close that's like one note at a time you know Fibo, for christmas can we spend a couple hours uh just improving my bass skills absolutely on my, you, ba on my bass or your maybe, bass maybe maybe on mine i i bought a four string bass you guys and i'm i'm excited to start learning on it i i admit that I, you know starting on the five string is a little strange because then the, the regular four string looks very confusing after that 
So I wanted to come back to a question uh, that I thought was a great way to, oh, thank you, Samuel. I appreciate it. Um, okay. Alice crushed it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Couple questions we have here. Oh, these are, <laughs> first of all, when's your birthday, Freebo? My birthday, I'm a Pisces, uh, 5th of March. You're such a Pisces. I, I am really a Pisces, you know. Any, anybody who knows anything about astrology knows that Pisces tend to be indecisive, and uh, that I am. There's, there's a good thing and a bad thing about that. The good thing is that you can see both sides of a situation, which is really good. So there's a, <coughs> a certain lofty <laughs> perspective, which is yeah. great. The problem is you right. go, well, on the one hand, then again, and you can get very much caught at that fork in the road going, hmm, which way do I go? So. Yep, yep. And, and you, mine, Alice, Mine is a, coming up. I'm an Aquarius. My yeah. birthday is January 29th, and I'm going to be 30. And you're going to be doing a special show for that, I am, you? actually. That's that's a nice yeah. uh, little segue. I am going to yeah. do a special 30th birthday uh, live streaming show on Facebook and YouTube, and maybe I'll have some special guests. Maybe I, would you like I to be, be a special I'd guest? Love to be absolutely. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna do like a long, um, just really fun, maybe two hour live streaming show. I'll play all of my songs, and um, my birthday's on a Friday, so that'll be Friday the 29th of January next month. And oh, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna have a lot of really fun new merch items I'm working on putting together, like a new T-shirt and some other cool stuff. So. I'm Just excited so people to know, that. And it's a little bit of shameless promotion for Alice, so it's not shameless, I guess, but Alice is a wonderful artist as well as musician. She's, she draws well, she writes well, so she's got a thing with uh, personalized lyrics, and uh, anything she writes or draws is pretty cool, kind of like Joni Mitchell. It's, not, it's her own style, but... Wow. It's, it's, it's that type. No, I, I, Thanks, I'm Freeves. very impressed by it. I really well, am. thank you. I've been enjoying getting into it more in this this year of COVID. Um, I've had more time to do visual art than I've had since I was a kid. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to be offering uh, some of that stuff on my Patreon. Um, and I did put the link up there. That's patreon.com slash Alice Howe. And I'm, I'm trying to get Freebo to join Patreon, too, because it's such a great way to connect yeah, with fans. And It's a good way to, to, <laughs> to, to kind of sort of make a living, too, and help pay the rent. It is. It's, it is. it's been helping me a lot when, when folks sign up. It means so much. So thank you guys for those questions. Um, By the way, and I saw that Richard Tarsi, that your son is also March 5th. That's pretty cool. And you, too, are Pisces, Richard. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, I know your uncle, your dad. I think it's your uncle. Who, uh, who ran Sigma Sound in Philly, where all that wonderful Philadelphia Gamble and Huff, all those hits came out of there, and I've recorded there a couple times, and uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, quite a quite a family heritage. I mean, uh, he was he was yeah. amazing, yeah. great engineer. Hey, Richard, nice to have you on tonight. So another question that was on a little earlier, Freebo, was about the photos that are behind us in the bookshelf. Oh, um, yes. Somebody that that caught their eye, and and I think. Maybe you could take a moment to just talk about, I don't know, your favorite one on there, you and Bonnie. Well, there's I've some got really a couple, couple ones. on here. Can I uh, grab one? Which, yeah, which one? Grab you... this one here, this okay. kind of nice one. Because I can't quite see I'll that. I'll bring it up to you guys. Let's see if I can see if we can refocus. Freebo, tell them about this photo. Well, this is, uh, th this is really, this is the early days of, uh, of Bonnie and myself. We started playing together. and We met in 1968. I was playing with Edison Electric, and she came to see us at the Electric Factory in Philadelphia. <laughs> we were opening for Procol Harum, mm -hmm. and uh, and I met her, and I went to her first gig and watched her grow up, and uh, we were breaking up. I got a call from her, and that was 1971, and I started playing with her, and this picture basically is, is of, of the two of us together. The first three years, 71, 72, and 73, we were a duo. And uh, Bonnie would sit and play her guitar and her national, and I would uh, play my fretless bass. <laughs> and so that's uh, oh, she said that's right. She signed it. So uh, that 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 really harkens back to the vibe we had back then, and they were they were very special times. I mean, not that the times we put a band together weren't. I mean, that was a whole different thing. It was much more rock and roll, but uh, that duo thing was a lot of fun. And what's really cool about it for me. It is very similar to what uh, Alice and I are doing now. She also happens to have red hair, and she's playing guitar, and I'm playing bass, and we're singing harmonies. In fact, truth is, I enjoy singing harmonies much more now because I sang very reluctantly back then. But somebody uh, said, "No way, you were a duo." 
Samuel said, no way. We were a duo. Yes, It way. wasn't called Bonnie and Freebo. It was called <laughs> Bonnie Ray, okay? You know, so I was hired by her. But a lot of people th- thought it was Bonnie and Freebo. And there's some old videos on, on YouTube. Yeah, you, you guys should out. definitely check out um, the old gray whistle test. The, it, there's the whole um, show. I think it's like 45 minutes. It's so good. It's um, from like 73 or something of you guys, the band. Maybe it's a little later than that. But there's also a um, couple old videos of like Love Has No Pride and some some great ones, some really, really beautiful old old videos of them you should check them out by the way james bonnie didn't play with uh, george jones uh I'm not, I'm not sure if you think of bonnie bram but i mean george jones was kind of before her time george jones was very country I and mean, you know incredible i mean he just talk about you know uh, iconic and in inventing uh country licks but uh uh, what to say? Uh, oh yeah, I was going to ask Al because a good question from Vincent, uh, which says, uh, "When did you know you were going to do this full time for Alice?" You know, and uh, and what was the calling? And then let's ask that guy. That's a, that's a good yeah, question. Yeah. Um, thanks for that question. I I have known as long as I can remember anything that that this is what I wanted to do. To be honest, so I mean, I I definitely struggled with like the doubt of like how do you make that happen and Doesn't like everybody and does and this. maybe it's i mean i had plenty of times where i was like no, maybe it's just not possible like maybe i can't figure out how to do it because i didn't come from a family of like you know um full-time performers or anything like that or you know full-time professional artists of any kind so the model for me was that you would go to school and and become a professional in some way and get a degree and get a job which was what you know I was seeing in my parents and my older brother so for me it was really I definitely had to f- strike out on my own and I had their support I mean I was really lucky that you know my, my parents always encouraged you know art artistic and creative pursuit when I was growing up but um, I still definitely had to um, I would say like make a stand for myself and be like no this is the life that I want to have so hey it's tough when you come from we both come from you know uh, middle to upper middle class families I mean uh, our parents were professionals my dad was a lawyer uh, yeah. your father was an architect your mother was a pediatrician yeah and and when you come from that background you're expected I know I was expecting yeah. you to to go to college and right. become a professional and I feel really fortunate about that I mean I went to Smith College I feel so lucky that I had that opportunity. It was like such a good place for me. But I mean, I didn't study music in school. I actually studied medieval European history. Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally majored in medieval European history. Like that's not a joke. Um, And I find history fascinating. And, you know, I just loved reading all the primary sources and I had wonderful professors and, you know, it was, i made the best friends of my life in college. Like I loved, I loved Smith. you know, and they've been really supportive of me in the last few years, kind of helping to tell like the alum community about what I'm doing. But it's, it, you know, I couldn't graduate from Smith with a degree in um, songwriting and, and, you know, there's no blueprint for how to do, you know, what, right. what I'm trying to do. And I think that can be really scary at times. Um, well, I mean, Alice and I have talked about, I mean, to me, the, the blueprint of doing it, obviously you, you want to, you have to take up an instrument. Somebody said, you know, if you hadn't played guitar, would you take up? I started on piano, yeah. played tuba. But the bottom line is you, you either need to have an instrument or for somebody else, just singers who don't play an instrument, you at least need to develop your instrument and your voice. But uh, I think what happens is the, be- the best school is the school of hard knocks. I mean, you, yeah. can, you can do all you want. You can yeah. go to school. You can go to a Berkeley or... Right. or but but when it comes to I mean look how much I mean from the time I met you yeah no uh, it's it's so ago, true I mean, how much you've grown just so being out there on the road and playing a bunch of shows has made me and being in the studio with you and all the other professional musicians that I've been able to work with has just made me grow so much I think you can't there's no substitute for that I think um, not that there's anything wrong with getting like an MFA or something but I just that was never going to be the path but for at me some point. Yeah, like I always learned in, in, I think, the folk tradition, you know, like I, I learned songs 
from watching other people how to play them and um, learn to sing from singing along with recordings that I loved and stuff. Yeah. I joke that Tracy Chapman taught me how to sing because I basically just like completely imitated every single vocal lick that she did when I was like 11 years old <laughs> until I had them down. And then once I had them down, I could like tweak them a little bit. Um, well, I mean, at university life, it was interesting because it, when you said that, it occurred to me, I thought, well, I didn't start playing. I didn't really pick up the bass until I was probably 21 years old. I played guitar a little bit for a couple of years. Uh, but when I did, uh, and I started playing with my thumb and with my fingers, but basically I was like, okay, what do you do? So somewhere between Ray Brown, you know, in, in, in jazz and some of those guys who walk it, and then some of the blues players and the Paul Butterfield yeah. Blues Band, and then hearing a guy like James Jamerson, all the Motown stuff, and hearing Ronnie Baker did all of the Gamble and Huff stuff out of Philly, uh, Phil Lesh from the Grateful Dead, and each one you kind of, I, I know I did, I, I, I learned a couple licks from that person, I like that style, and you just add to your vocabulary and eventually it becomes your style, and it's the same with singing. I mean, so, yeah, you, 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 were, you were imitating Tracy Chapman, but along comes Joan Baez and then Joni Mitchell and then Taj Mahal and Muddy Waters, and before you know and then a little bit of the Celtic stuff, and before yeah. you know it, it's Alice Howe. I know, we're all hybrids. That's the way it works. Thank you all. I'm just, there's so many really, really sweet comments. Thank you so much, Samuel and Vincent and Trevor and, and, and all of you for just um and mark thanks uh, mark said how come alice only has 500 subscribers on her youtube channel i just want to say if you would like to go over there and subscribe mm -hmm. i would love that because i am definitely working on working toward a thousand working right? toward a thousand and beyond so for those of you who are watching on youtube and or facebook please do look me up it's alice how music and and hit that subscribe button and you can follow each of us on Facebook too. Freebo's at Freebo fan page on Facebook, and I'm at Alice Howe Music. And find us on Instagram too. It it actually does really help independent artists like us when you just take a second to subscribe and follow. Mm -hmm. I, it seems crazy, but in this day and age, um, you know, folks at record labels and you know, publicity and people that that you know work in in the business of music do look at those kinds of things to kind of see how legit you are. So. Yeah. It is what it is. If I hear that phrase one more time oh this God. year, I'm gonna scream, but I just said it. Okay, I'm gonna play a song. More music, yeah. Let's do line by line. Okay. In like the normal Speaking way. Speaking of which, uh, I just wanna throw this in there, Alice, that uh, we were in a recording studio yesterday, uh, recording this song, putting some demos together. And uh, in terms of the life path, Alice actually said, you know, it's really interesting working with professionals. We were myself and there was a really good drummer a guy named M.B. Gordy and she said something about with you guys it's just there's no question about it you just kind of how'd you say it? but you do what you do it was yeah really cool um, what you said. I was referring to M.B. we were making some demos this week which was so fun and and for those of you who were asking my next record is is in the works I'm mm -hmm. going to be putting out singles next year um, hopefully starting uh, in the first half of next year. I'll be putting out a single every month or so. It's what I'm hoping to do. But the, the full record will probably be another year. Um, we got a lot of work to do. And some exciting um, news on that front coming shortly. But um, MB, the drummer, you know, I was just saying to Freebo, like, he never, you know, you don't have to say, like, wow, great job on each take because... Mm -hmm when you're among people, I mean, you can, and it's great. And it's nice to get that It's great to it really confirm that people are talented. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think when you're in an environment with people who are just pros, like everyone's just like, well, of course you, you did your best because that's what you do. Like Don Clune, of course you caught that pass. Well, you know? and it's just really, really cool for me at this point to be among people who, who like, who take me that way. And yeah. where I just, can show up as myself and do my best work and and it's just assumed that that's what everyone's gonna do and right. i just love that yeah. freebo it's 5 40 and we've played two songs oh well, let's play some more music <laughs> and and by the way if you guys want to request some songs please do yeah we're taking requests i wouldn't call it early but it's not too late 
slate in my hand I gotta leave the best of fate I could lie here crying Or try to understand My chips are gone I can't make no more demands Well, it's hard to face it I let it get so bad I stuck a knife into the life I had But I had to do it Oh my god, I forgot the words New verse again It's a brand new verse Well, it's hard to face it I let it get so bad I stuck a knife into the life I had But I had to do it I got it I wouldn't give that power to no one else But I'm guilty I got nothing more to say Yeah. 
decorations of red on a green Christmas tree won't be the same. Christmas anymore without hearing Porky Pig. I should I should try to learn that version. I saw someone put down Alvis. We're kidding. When 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 Al, I'm when Alice make... does an Elvis record is going to be a uh, Alice Alvis. No, Alvis Alvis does Elvis. Oh my God. Um, hey, while you're getting your guitar, I think we should maybe do this week's giveaway. Oh yes, let's uh, talk about the cordial So, as you guys, coffee. many of you know, and some of you are actually watching who have won previously, but we are doing a weekly giveaway sponsored by our good friends at Cordial Cables USA. And Cordial is a manufacturer, a German company that makes absolutely premium quality instrument and mic cables. And we're using them today. We've been using them on our show. We've got, I think, like six six cables right now running they've mm -hmm. they've sent us a bunch and my cables we, guitar cables definitely. yeah yep. we, we just can't speak highly enough to um just how clean the signal is how how clear there's absolutely no uh resistance or background noise and it's just really really nice to work with such quality equipment so tonight we are giving away a t-shirt and a cable from mm -hmm. cordial um in order to enter to win you want to just, all you have to do is comment in the chat and just wherever you're watching, I'm, we're seeing all the comments come in from uh, YouTube and Facebook, um, and just say, hey, I'd like to enter to win a cable, and we will randomly select somebody before the end of the show, and we'll announce you on the show. So just uh, put your comment in the chat uh, saying I'd like to win a Cordial cable or something to that effect, and um, keep watching because we will announce the winner before the end of the show. And, um, Lifetime guarantees on these cables, oh, yes. by the way. It's, if, yes. it's the only one you'll ever need unless you need two. Um, oh, my Get gosh. Was, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted by a comment that um, we have a viewer who is about to turn 85, and he's wow. really enjoying the show. Oh, Happy great. almost birthday, fellow January baby. Where are you watching from? His name on here is Mr. Poodle Guy. I'm guessing your name is not actually Mr. Poodle Guy. Mr. Poodle Guy? But maybe you have a poodle. <laughs> um, great. I'm seeing some comments come in. Oh, and by the way, I should mention, you do have to be a, uh, you have to have a United States shipping address for the cable. Um, J our friend James had to learn the hard way <laughs> when he won. Um, we cannot ship internationally at this point, so thank you so much to our international viewers. You do have to be, um, do have to be in the U.S. to, to enter to win. Um, great. So let's see. What are you tuning? Ross, you'd love to win a cable, huh? Well, okay. You you are now entered. Yes. Um, 
So we have a comment from Matt. He's wondering what tuning you're in, Freebo. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the partial capo. I will talk capo. a little bit about the partial capo. This is a very cool thing, and uh, I got turned on to it uh, by uh, a fellow named Randall Williams, uh, who worked for Kaiser, and I've since turned Alice on to it, and uh, she's done wonders with it. Here's what it does. This, first of all, somebody asked what kind of guitar this is. It's a, uh, a 1964 Martin D28. And... Uh, Kind of hard to see the Martin logo, and it's pretty much worn off. But I've had this since 1972, and I love it. Sound better than ever. The finish is wearing off. That's kind of a good thing. I mean, some people say, "Well, it's values. It's losing value." I don't care about that. It's gaining resonance. I think <laughs> it's it gaining kind of, vibes. It's gaining and vibe. I got Tommy Emanuel to sign it. I saw him play one time, and I was blown away, and had him sign my guitar. Uh, this is regular tuning, except I tuned down a whole step. So instead of being E and A, it's actually D, G, and goes from there, F. Uh, but it's regular. So when I put this partial capo on, oh, oh it's over. Am I over here? Where you am I? You are, yeah. I'm I, over I here. switched you when to there. When I put there. this partial capo on, it's the close only, up. it covers only three frets, and this leaves the bottom E string open. So. I'm gonna put on the second fret, right here. And now I puts me in a fake dad get. D, which actually is dad get, because I'm in D. D, A, D, G, A, D. So I can play with one finger. And this chord. of things with and I figured out a whole bunch of things with it and I love doing it and uh, I actually give uh, do workshops on partial capo if anybody wants to get in touch with me email me freebo at freebomusic.com we can do a one on one or we can get a group together but uh change my playing and I've written a bunch of songs change my it. playing too and honestly I, I recommend if you guys are interested in like an infusion of uh oh, I just re revealed I'm wearing slippers. Oh well. You know what? That's the nice thing about doing shows at your house. You get to wear your slippers. <laughs> um, I like being comfortable. Right? I, I like to call this party on top. And uh, I mean, business on top, party on the bottom outfit. Um, Ted, Ted Spiro said, tell everybody about your incredible songwriting classes. Yeah. Well, I like doing songwriting classes, and sometimes I do them by myself, and sometimes Alice and I do them together. But uh, and obviously we have a, a whole different way of writing songs, and it's, it's kind of interesting when we do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, once again. Yeah, just, get in uh, touch with um, with either one of us, um, but write, definitely write to Freebo at freebomusic.com. Um, and whether you want to do, like, a lesson with both of us or... Um, or a one-on-one -on -one or, um, or, with Freebo. or a group. I'm not the partial capo guy. I'm, like, the lyrics and emotion and, um, you know, inspiration guy. But we, we do, I think we do offer a nice complimentary thing. Yeah, if you're, if you're interested in a private lesson, get in touch. So I'm going to do two songs with this partial capo in this particular thing. Uh, two, both completely different, but just to kind of show what you can do and what I do with them. Uh, and Alice has already done something, but I'm sure she'll do something uh, of her own. But uh, not that we're just trying to sell the partial capos or anything like that, but somebody asked <laughs> about it. And uh, it just puts you in a different tune without, great. without having to retune your guitar. That's what's cool about it. You know, it's really neat. So... Uh, this is a uh, uh, a new song. I uh, haven't recorded it yet, but uh, I uh, I pretty much put it together and I kind of brought it to Alice, and Alice had some ideas, so uh, she added some lyrics to it, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, it's not exactly a dog song, but there's a, a dog is a very main character. And what was the name of the, the poodle guy? Oh, we didn't learn his name. We never got his name, but He's the, guy. our 85-year-old friend of uh, Poodle Guy, uh, I'm going to send these songs out to you because you're obviously a dog person. <laughs> Unless you're talking about some other kind of poodle, I have no idea, but I'm assuming it's a dog. And um, it's a kind of a love song. These are both love songs, different different kinds. But this song is uh, Wishing My Shadow Was You. I went for a walk on 
a full moon night Wishing my shadow was you And as I walked on in that full moon light I was wishing that dream would come true In the whispering breeze I could almost believe you were there in the silvery blue Just me and my dog on a full moon night Both wishing my shadow was you Missing you, missing you So you were singing Melly, and I went and sang. I, I, I was going to say, that. nice work, just jumping that. into that harmony part. Yeah, love, so we're, we we both love singing harmonies, and thank you, Lisa, for that. Uh, Aww. Yeah, both Alice and I sang in a cappella groups. Uh, I I sang in the uh, high school a cappella choir, and then uh, when I went to University of Pennsylvania, joined a glee club. I sang a cappella in college too. You did. I know that. <laughs> what was the name of your group? The Smithereens, of Smithereens course. Smithereens from Smith, of course. Hey, I just want to thank um, several of you for uh, Maddie K and Spanky. Uh, thank you both for sending us a couple tips here. Um, and I know that they're also coming in on Venmo. And I've even got a couple patrons that signed up during the show. So thank you all so much. Thanks, Mike Edwards. Um, and thank you, Vincent, again. Thanks to James Noble and Dan Thompson. If you guys are in a position to send us a, a donation for tonight's show. We, we really appreciate that. I know it's a really a tough time present. for everybody. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, many of us are, are waiting for our stimulus checks <laughs> excitedly. That would be interesting but, to um, see what happens, huh? Yeah. So, but, you know, that, that being said, if you are in a position to 
to tip us, pretend that you bought a ticket for tonight's show. We'd really appreciate that. Yeah, five um, bucks, ten bucks would be great. We'd and I'll, I'll put the info up again here, but it, it is paypal.me slash Alice Howe Music or Venmo at Alice Howe Music. And I promise to share them with Freebo. Oh, thank you, Alice. <laughs> I appreciate You're that. You're welcome. Thank you. And, and if anything comes into me, although my, my Venmo is not up there, I'll share it with you as well. How's that? Yeah, sorry. I have this kind of cycling through here. It's it, that you've I've put up our links to find us online, but then like one of those slides you will see. It's the tip, yeah. the tip slide. The tip slide. There yeah. it is. PayPal.me slash Alice Howe Music or Venmo at Alice Howe Music. Would you play another song? So yeah, let me do another song. And this is another dog song. This is a whole different kind of a feel with the guitar with this partial capo and exactly the same play. I see I was doing a... Uh, Capo is pretty cool. This one I have Alice playing bass on. Uh oh. And uh, this is this is a real dog song. Oh, I just want to answer this question before oh, it goes that? away because he asked twice. Hey, Mark, um, I am using a camera switcher that I bought at Sammy's Camera in Los Angeles, um, here in town. It's called the Black Magic Design ATEM Mini Pro, um, and it was you know, an investment, but I think, I think it was a worthy one. It's, it's working well for me. Um, it has a lot more buttons than I actually know how to use, but, um, for what I am doing with it, it's mm -hmm. nice. I can connect up to four cameras. So thank you for that question. I've, uh, you know, I've had to really spend some time learning how to use it, but it's, it's cool. And I love that. Uh, thanks to Norm, how he found us. Uh, we are broadcasting as, uh, obviously some of you know, on, uh, Norman Harris's Norman's Rare Guitars YouTube channel. Uh, and they've got a wonderful following. Yep. And uh, uh, they've you, helped Norm. us a lot by, by getting you. us out there. Thank you for that. We first started by doing these shows with some couple of guitar shredders because we know the Norman folks love that. But we've slowly weaned you <laughs> we've uh, been from that and introduced you to some folkies and some blues people. And, you know, look, we just... I, Not I, to assume also, we don't actually know what their musical taste no, is. We, we just know that you love guitars well, if you it, follow they, Norman's we know they love guitars. guitars right? So and we've been are, like sprinkling in our, our folky friends bit right. by bit and you guys have been responding so well to them and, and I just feel like we've created a really nice little community here. Yeah. It it's really... nice that folks are starting to like recognize each other in the chat and be like, yeah. Oh hey, what's up? I love that. It is. It's a little it's our own little community here. It is. So I uh, thank you all and, and yeah, get to know each other and uh who knows, you never know, uh maybe two people will meet on here and wind up getting married, wouldn't that be something, you know? <laughs> Let's not get crazy. Okay, musical relationship. Anyway, this is so instead of doing what I did now, I'm going doing a simple rocking thing. Did you hear that, folks? So hopefully the bass is loud enough that we could. But. Oh, God. Should not. 
Christmas song? Oh, sure. What key do we do that in? Oof, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just have to point out a very funny comment. What's James that? James said, I bet your dog loved you more than her, though. Oh. That's an interesting twist that, to the story. Oh. Hmm. My dog loves me more than <laughs> her. <laughs> more than you. The dog loves me more than <laughs> you. I know you love my dog, and I love my dog, but my dog loves me more than you. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about... Or our dog. Oh, okay, is that good melody for you? Do it again. Oh, uh, <clears throat> okay, here we go. <laughs> O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark stream shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. 
Hmm. Thank you all. <laughs> hey, did anybody happen to see, speaking of Christmas stars, anybody see the great conjunction oh, the yeah. other night with uh, Saturn and Jupiter mm -hmm. and being so close How together? Cool and that? the fact that that's probably what happened with the star of Bethlehem was the two planets yeah. that were really close together. And and people were, no, no, no disparagement to those of you who were very much into the Christmas story. Same thing. Doesn't matter. But an they interesting they didn't, scientific yeah, interpretation. Yeah, they didn't know the difference between stars and planets back then. It was a heavenly body shining, and, and it, it had a symbolic meaning, and I'm, I'm good with that. And as a medieval history major, oh. I happen to love the fact that the last time they were this close together was, I believe, in 1226. And if there's anything I love, it's the 13th century. <laughs> So. Yeah, why, why is that? Why do you love the 13th century so much? Because they're, where do not, I they're, even they're, begin? They're known as the Dark Ages, but you have, I, told, you have told me many times, Freebo, they weren't all dark. There was some light in the so-called Dark Ages. Tell me a little bit. Tell it a little <laughs> bit about that, because that's, that's kind of interesting. I mean, I'm I'm just fascinated by history in general because I feel like you can get this sense that that humans haven't really changed all that much like our circumstances change and the technologies that we have and sort of our attitudes as a society change but like at our core we are are you even listening to me i am listening to you yeah <laughs> having a moment here no no i'm totally listening look to at you. me while i talk oh, about I medieval was, history <laughs> Because it's, it's somebody says, Banky's saying, you'd love to hear some stuff about, about the 13th century and 700 years. But, sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, no, I just, I think it's so interesting that, that people generally, like, our hearts kind of don't change. I have this, that, that, I have, like, a feeling about that that's just very powerful, I think. Yeah. And when you read really old um, literature or even, like, love poetry or it's like we we want the same things it's like we just want to be seen and we want to have purpose and that that doesn't change yeah. and so you feel this like kinship with people from such a long time ago and that really just kind of blows me away but um what's interesting about the middle ages to me is that it's like kind of the underdog it's like not the classical period mm -hmm. which is like everybody thinks of like oh greece and rome is like so amazing and then they think the renaissance is so amazing but they forget about that in between and it's kind of all lumped together and it's like such a i mean yeah there was a lot of really horrible stuff that happened some pretty nasty stuff um, happening back and it then. wasn't a great time to be a woman or a jew or you know a lot of things but you know or to be poor or you know but i Never think a good time to be poor right but but despite that you know like the renaissance never would have happened without like all the stuff that led up to no, it that's true well Sorry, an interesting thing just... about about history and what you're talking about in human nature is that it's I, I love that phrase that uh you know if you don't learn from history you're doing to repeat it because you know the human tendencies are the same the ego is the same mm -hmm. the emotions are the same we only have x number of emotions and yep. uh, so th they don't change from century to century and human yeah. behavior basically doesn't change you know yeah. they're the leaders the followers you know the yeah the, the good guys the bad guys so to speak yeah and yes samuel i have been here before on this planet i'm not sure in what century but thank you for noticing because <laughs> i think i have <laughs> um so rick converse you're not a big fan of the 1300s huh <laughs> i love that but hey, like, like Alice said, if that stuff hadn't happened, 14, 1500 so would not have happened either. So, oh my God. You know? All right, I got to stop. It's going to get crazy. I'm Lillian here. wants you to write a book on medieval history, Alice. <laughs> it would you have know? so many inaccuracies. <laughs> Wait, you know, you know it would what? be like as I remember it from like five years ago. Ten I, years I have ago. a challenge for you. I'm oh God, she'd probably please. Never but when you were talking about all this stuff and your medieval history and... and the history of, uh, of your history of music and Joan Baez's ballads, it would be interesting for you to do an album, I, I know. Oh my God, stop. Do, uh, what? Where, where you, you assume a character. No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I just said interesting, I just do it. We all have so many I do have, have a do. fantasy of writing a historical fiction novel, though. Well, there you go. I'll wind up with some music. It would be it. set in medieval Spain and... It would have something to do with the kind of like, you know, the troubadours, like the yeah. romance poetry. Yeah. The origin of that was actually in medieval um, Muslim Spain. Like there were Islamic writers who 
did like this love poetry that kind of got adopted by the French later. And I have this idea of doing like something at that time. And oh my God, I sound like such a nerd. No, nerd, I am I mean, nerd. According to whom? Who's defining nerd? Oh right. my God! Greatest hits of the 13th century. <laughs> that would be like so dark. It there there weren't even chords. I don't think. I think I would just have to chant. No, it, there were motets. They were they were kind of starting you know, to get to chords, but there were certain things. I mean, things like sevens that we play now were considered. Oh my God! Evil devil's music. Hey, well, blues was considered the devil's music for a long time. So were lefties. So you're I'm a you're lefty out and I play well. blues. Uh oh. Um, I just want to thank you, big thank you to Maddie, uh, Maddie Kay, who's watching on YouTube. Thank you so much for that generous tip, Maddie. We, we so appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I know you've been watching a number of times. And thank you all for, for being here with us and listening to us go on and on about God knows what. I'm having a great time. Though. I am, too. I hope you guys are enjoying it. You know, we usually go uh, 90 minutes for this. If you want us to go a little longer, we're happy to do it. It's not like it's uh, you know costing us in band time, but uh, yeah. Hey, just just keep it coming, and we'll keep it coming. <laughs> what do you got coming, Alice? What's and I'm gonna play a here? request for Samuel, um, who asked for who asked for nothing but you, which is really one of my favorite songs to play. So um, happy to do that one for you. And. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's like a Saturday Night Live skit without the punchline. <laughs> My line. God, it actually is though. This has no punchline. Hey Jeff, four hours. Well, I don't know about that, but thank hey, you. Hey, if the tips keep coming. Hey, keep the tips coming. We'll keep the music coming. You know. I mean. Oh, you never told him about the coffee, did you? Did you well, ever no, I haven't. But I can only do one giveaway at a time. We have oh. to complete the first one. Oh, okay. Stay tuned, folks. Yes. We've got a coffee giveaway coming up. <laughs> and in this show, I don't have like the three-minute intervals of the other person playing a song. That's right. Where I can hide and like look at my computer for three minutes. Yeah, I was so. just reminding you, that's all. Thank you. I'd like to, to share this song, which is um, it's about my dad. And I, I talk about him a fair amount, I think, in my sets because he, uh, he was such a, an influence on me artistically and and just as a person and I, I love him and he's been gone for 11 years now and I think of him every day so this is for him it's called nothing but you gone in a flash gone in a flame Gone in the dark Gone when I call your name Under a wave Under the ground Under my skin And still you hardly make a sound Look back, and still I see nothing, nothing but you. A cabin floor, a piece of gold. I'd take anything, anything my hands can hold. A dream that lingers in the light and leaves you stumbling back toward that gentle night.
mistaken this whole time But if I'd never lost you You may never have been mine Gone in the winter Gone in the spring the leaves were falling I Then I swear I heard you sing The summer's come And I look around And still you're nowhere I look back and still I see nothing I look within and still I see nothing nothing but you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you guys are, you're killing me. I'm feeling the Christmas spirit tonight yeah. in these comments. Yeah, and nice. I'm so grateful for you guys for, for all of this, um, this wonderful energy coming in. Thank Absolutely. you so and, much, really. And, and Bruce, you, uh, you asked for my, uh, oh, thank you for, uh, uh some really nice words about your bass Appreciate playing. That. Thank you. And thanks to yeah, I love playing fretless bass. I really do. I have a stand-up bass. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kind of learning how to play it. It's 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 a whole different animal. Just it's like so physical. Uh, so, but the fretless is a really nice combination of the electric bass and the upright bass, and uh, I love doing them both. Bruce asked for uh, for my email. Uh, my email is freebo at freebomusic.com. F R E E B O at freebomusic.com. Uh, any of you are Certainly welcome to email me anytime, you know, with thoughts or suggestions or just, uh, you know, friendliness. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, I'm not that private of a person. <laughs> no, I, In I, light of that, can I ask you another interview question? Oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, this is like, this is, you know, what the people want. Give the people what oh, they, they want. Oh, they do? I don't know. Well, I'm just assuming. We'll, we'll, we'll see about um, that, I guess, but. It's somewhat more personal. Okay, can I sort of tune while you? <laughs> so I'll be listening. To I know that it. you know you you came up in uh, the '60s mm -hmm. in a in a band called Edison Electric Band mm -hmm. in Philly, and obviously the '60s were a very uh, fascinating time in history, and I feel like you got to live through so much incredible music and cultural change and, and all of the above. Um, can you tell us just like, I don't know, a funny story about like the old, the old days? Like, um, <laughs> I have a specific story I want oh, yeah, you to like, tell. <laughs> okay, t tell me what, and, and just what are you, what are you aiming at here? <laughs> um, about the time you guys were on the TV show. <laughs> Like early in the morning. I know that's okay. sort of like you know. No, no, it's perfect. it's a little uh, not risque. Colorful. It's a colorful <laughs> tale. Um, it was a colorful day. Colorful I just feel night, like it's it's morning. so it's it's just so funny. You you gotta tell <laughs> okay, it. It's one of my right. favorites. Is, uh, have any of you ever done acid? 
just just uh, let me know. You don't have to tell me the whole experience, but I'm going to tell you part of my experience. Uh, uh, I would not be the same had I not done LSD. Uh, I, having grown up in, in the 50s in this little coal town in 1950s America, uh, uh, I was uh, programmed, I think, as we all were. And basically, my life finding me in the late 60s in Philadelphia in a rock and roll band in the counterculture uh, and having got turned on to drugs, to marijuana, which I grew up with. Oh, my God, it's uh, reefer madness. It's horrible stuff. But uh, th my band mates finally convinced me to do it, and I did, and I went, oh, my God, this is not so bad. It's finally legal just about, thank God. Imagine how many people were, you know, needlessly thrown in prison mm. uh, for smoking a joint. Awful stuff. But uh, that led me to, uh, okay, to <laughs> take some acid, and they did it. Well, on the third trip, and I like to say that uh, a lot of people say acid will turn you upside down. You've heard me say this before, some of you, but I kind of feel like I was upside down. The acid turned me right side up. Now, it was the 60s, and it wasn't about getting high. It was about, about experimenting, you know, just about, about uh, uh, delving into, you know, who you are and, and what's your place in the world and what is the world and what is the universe and just how it all fits together. So in this particular trip, uh, we're playing in the band, it had an electric band, and uh, we, had, uh, we were asked to do a TV show, uh, a local Philadelphia TV show on the local ABC affiliate. I think it was WFIL, if I remember correctly. Oh, this one here. Sorry. Yeah. Remember correctly, camera number two. It's actually number three, but camera number three. Go hello on. there. Speaking <laughs> of WFIL <in> Philadelphia, <laughs> my camera switcher director Alice Al over here. She's multitasking. Uh. It's great. So we were asked that we were the Edison Electric Band, and it turns out it was Thomas Edison's birthday. So we were asked the Edison Electric Band. We were becoming somewhat known in Philly. It was probably 1968, and. Uh, so uh, we were asked to show up there at 6 o'clock in the morning for a 7 or 7 o'clock show, and we had a fraternity gig the night before that lasted till you know, one thirty. So by the time we packed up and everything, it was 2, 2.30 in the morning. We thought, well, why go to sleep? We'll just go over to one of the guys' house, and we'll, we'll stay up for a couple hours. So we're there, and one of the guys who just said, hey, let's drop some acid. And they went, no, we can't do that. No, my mother's going to be watching. And... That's so irresponsible. Well, they all did, and I thought, well, I, I'm not going to be the only sane fool in this bunch, so I did too. And uh, we roared off to the studio higher than high. I don't know how we got there but we and how we found it, but we did. And... Uh, and I'll never forget, it was, uh, it, was, it was actually a seminal experience in my life. The first part, which is not seminal, it was just weird, was I was playing my bass and I'm playing a note and my hand went right through the bass, right through the neck. <laughs> and the neck was kind of going like this. That sounds you know. so difficult. It, well, it is. And you play a note and it goes, boom, yo, yo. And everybody else in there goes, boy, yo. So, but, but somehow it all fits together. When we somehow got through the show, we somehow got through the show. I gotta, you gotta find a tape of this show. Uh, Somebody's uh, gotta have a tape. If anybody knows how you can get, you see the 1967 or 1968. <laughs> but here's here's the cool part about it, is that after the show, I was just sitting there, just contemplating my life and what I'm doing. I, I was in a rock and roll band, but I was still going through the guilt that we talked about earlier of, of. Uh, what am I going to be when I grow up? At this point, I'm 23 years old, and and I'm still kind of confused. And I was looking around at everybody in the show, and here was the interviewer, and she was interviewing a geologist, and there was a cameraman and the director, and I kept thinking, I said, gosh, I wonder how they'd look at me. And I thought, well, they just think of me as a long-haired freak in a rock and roll band. We called ourselves freaks back then. And uh, I thought, well, they must have a, they must have a, I must have a real name for that. And I thought about it for a long time and finally could. Musician. And I never thought of myself as a musician because when I grew up, there was no rock and roll. A musician was either classical or jazz, you know, or, or a teacher. And here I am playing bass in a rock and roll, but it was the first time it occurred to me that I'm a musician. There was something legitimate about that. And I started thinking a little bit further. I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could do this the rest of my life. So I started going deeper. I thought, well, 
what do you need in life? I thought, well, you need food, clothing, and shelter. I said, okay, <laughs> you need money for that. So if I can make enough money, my food, clothing, and shelter, I can do this. And then I got really deep when I thought, what's the most <laughs> important thing in life? And after God knows how long, I came up with the conclusion that the most important thing in life is to be happy. I thought, nah, that can't be it. And I thought about it some more. I thought, no, that's really important. Turns out all the spiritual practices are talking about what makes us happy, what feeds us. And at that moment, I thought, I'm playing music. I'm in a rock and roll band. I can make enough money doing this for my food, clothing, and shelter so I continue doing this the rest of my life. If I, if I keep doing what I'm doing that I love to do, it could make me happy. And right there at that moment, on that day, in that studio, I said, I found myself, I'm going to be a musician. And that's over 50, what, 53 years later? And I'm still doing it. Camera number one. <laughs> and I'm still doing it. And I can say I've been a pretty happy human being. And uh, that experience was... You know, we have different light bulb moments, seminal experiences. You know, yeah. I call them points of destiny in your life, and that was definitely one for me. So let me ask you this, Alice: How was the point of destiny for you? Whoa, the point of destiny, like yeah. to to. Where you made it? I left, just feel like there. A left turn. I feel like there are so many, and there's yeah, they're there are. small. Like I don't, I don't think of there being just one um big like i think i as we've we've discussed that that the combination of preparation and luck is opportunity mm -hmm. yeah and so i feel like preparation means opportunity right yeah yeah right right and i think that i've had different moments like that because i've i've set myself up for them and i've right. tried to tried to place myself in the right place at the right time and you never know but i think i mean one that comes to just mind just like your song i just you just never know yeah, yeah yeah um you know when i was living out in seattle i applied for a set at the folk life festival which is an annual festival in seattle with tons and tons of artists and it's outdoors and it goes on all weekend and um, I actually was selected for a set, which I was kind of shocked by because I was... How, how old were you at this point? I was like 23, 22, 23. After and I, college. I had just graduated mm -hmm. from Smith and I had moved out to Seattle and um, and I just was, was so thrilled that I got that, that, you know, 15 minute or 20 minute set. And it was, it just happened to be at a pretty cool little indoor space like and it had started raining outside because it's seattle and so everybody came in and there was a lot of people there um and that's where i met bill lippy hmm. um and, and bill maybe he's watching tonight but bill has a wonderful house concert series mm -hmm. in seattle um that he's done for years and years maybe a decade Excellent or more series, and he yeah. has just just killer acts every mm -hmm. time people come he has like a I don't know, maybe 60 people that come to his home, maybe even more than that. And it's just like one of the best gigs in town for an artist because he pays you really well. He takes mm -hmm. such good care of you. Him and his wife, Mickey, are just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, um, he came up to me after my set at Folk Life and, and he was like just effusively comp complimenting me and, and saying, you know, I don't usually have local acts, but maybe, Alice, I could have you come open for this woman at my concert series, um, whose name is Ancha Duvacot. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you've heard of her. And not only had I heard of her, but I had interviewed her for a project in high school where as my senior year project when I was 18 in Newton, Mass, I did like this kind of thesis paper about um, songwriters. And I interviewed Richard Schindel and, and Ancha. And, um, and so I knew her and I was like, I was a huge fan and so I got to open for her at his house and and I just remember different conversations with Bill um, after that where he was really pushing me to be like so are you are you gonna take this seriously like Alice mm. are you are you gonna like go for it and I was like at the time still like just out of college and and I was like nah, I don't know you know I didn't want someone to tell me what to do even though it's like I knew where I was going I just it was like a little too scared to make that commitment and I think well I'm guessing there's a little bit of the question of the guilt again of the family sit me you know wait a second I'm not supposed I'm supposed to do something else a little yeah. bit of that in there 
Yeah, more just like I'm, I'm, it was more just like a rebellious, like I don't want anyone to tell me um, mm. that it's time for me to do X, Y, or Z. But right. anyway, the point of the story that. is that I feel like there have been different like angels in my life yes. that have come in and, and kind of shown me something that I needed to know at that time. Like yeah. you are one of those people. Thank you. Um, you know, there have been different artists and, and different like, yeah, just people who have come in to, to show me what I needed to know at that moment to kind of like push me one step further. But that was a really long answer. No, but it's a, it, it's a good one. It's no that I and, and yeah, Bill is a wonderful person, and and he's very helpful like that. He's, it's like he, we all know people who are opinionated, but they're coming from a really pure, honest yeah. place. And at first, it's like don't tell me what yeah. to do. But the more you think about it, go, but they're right. Right, and well, they're and I've right. come back to him since then and been like, Bill, you were completely right. You know, in every Absolutely. way, and like thank God you just appeared at that moment to be mm-hmm. like. Hey, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? It's like, yeah. yeah. Um, they loved your story, by the way. I think. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you guys are in- enjoying having a little extra time with us here, no, with, without great. a guest. Better continuity. Maybe and more we'll um, maybe we'll do this more often. Yeah. Um, I did want to announce our cable winner since we're already over time and I think we're probably going to go for another 25 minutes or so because why not do a a longer Christmas show Um, and our winner tonight is Ross and Robin oh wow yes so um, it's always fun when we when we when we get to send something to someone we know so um, but Ross and Robin have done a wonderful house concert series and been very kind to us and and I know it's just coincidence that they you know that, that that's what came up but uh, yeah. Wow, that's, that's so. Wonderful. So Ross Thank and you, Robin Shintaub, if you're still watching, please just say, "Hey, I know you guys know how to get in touch with me." So thank you so much, everyone, for playing along with us tonight. And we are gonna do. Where are you going? Ooh, I get to use. I'm gonna use camera too. Hello. Um, <laughs> so yes, um, one more giveaway for tonight. Thank you all, and good, good, Robin and Ross. I'm glad you're watching. So glad you um, won for tonight. Okay, Lillian already knows the deal. There is a secret number. It's between one and a hundred. We are giving away a pound of freshly roasted fair trade organic coffee from Fair Trade Coffee Company, um, who friend, are based in New Jersey. Our good friend Arpy, um, and he's a coffee connoisseur. And we're so excited to be giving away a pound of his coffee. Thank you so much, Arpy, for supporting Inside Live. So. Everybody, please pick a number. And if you've already won, um, maybe sit this one out. Because <laughs> some of you are, like, frighteningly lucky. It's yeah. really weird. Yeah. Um, Terry, how you doing? Good to see you coming up with a number there. Freebo, I want... I always think of the number, so don't say it out loud. No, I just... But no, no, no. Oh. I want you to think of a number, and I'm going to get you a piece of paper, okay? Uh, because I, I feel I like... I can't, I can't do that because I just saw a number of this. Sorry, I'm looking. I, oh, I don't know well, how. then I'll use, I'll use I the one that I had. How. That's fine. I was just trying to give you a a turn to, well, to be involved. You. I'll, I'll no, use, you're so good at this. I will use the number that I already had in mind. What are you going to play? Uh, I think, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, it's never, never a good time to be poor <laughs> in history, you know. Uh, and there have always been poor people and... Uh, it's really sad when you think about it that, uh, especially with, you know, the Industrial Revolution and uh, all the, uh, all the progress in, in terms of you know agriculture and everything. There certainly is enough food, and uh, enough wealth, to go around. But uh, human beings tend to be greedy, uh, and we've seen that throughout history, and so there are always, have been, and probably always will be the haves and the have-nots. And uh, there are so many of the have-nots these days who are homeless and living here in Los Angeles. Uh, there are a lot of homeless people. Uh, you know, it's probably one of the better places to be if you're homeless. It's the, the weather is pretty decent and uh, you, can, you can survive somehow. But uh, it's, it's an unfortunate situation and uh, I wanted to write a song about that. Uh, I think it came from the 
having spent so many years in and around the folk world. And I was really first introduced to it with Bonnie and Maria Muldaur, and we played the Philadelphia Folk Festival and Mariposa and quite a few folk festivals. And uh, I'm now very much in the folk world as a singer-songwriter. So, uh, and there, there's this tradition of, of writing about and singing about uh, uh, working people and social issues. So I wanted to write a song about homelessness, and uh, I'd like to share it with you now. What year is your guitar again? Uh, it's a 64 Martin D28. Song's called When There's No Place Like Home. I used to be your neighbor. I had my job and I had my pride. But they shipped them both. And it ripped a hole inside They took my house last summer Now I'm hungry, cold, and scared And I'm wondering, does anybody care? When there's no place like home And you're out on your own you feel abandoned and alone When there's no place like home I used to be a hero The strong, the proud, the few When duty called, I stood up tall But no hero's welcome waited When his damaged soul returned Uncle Sam, don't give a damn That's what I learned When there's no place like home And you're out on your own You feel abandoned and alone when there's no place like home Please don't look right past me A simple smile could help me make it through I could be you If home is where the heart is Then where's the heart supposed to go when your living room's a cardboard box and your address is skid row if a man's home is his castle and the place where he is king what happens when he loses everything when there's no place like home And you're out on your own You feel abandoned and alone When there's no place like home When there's no place like home No place like home. Nice. 
Yeah, that song was uh, not originally written as a duet, but uh, once Alice and I started working together, uh, thought about it and thought, well, gee, why can't there be two characters in this song? And uh, so we turned it into a duet and hope, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, James. James yeah. Mave. Appreciate um, that uh, little comment and about Alice's camera work. She's kind of multitasking here where she's singing. And I am. That was the perfect cameras. opportunity because I wasn't playing an instrument. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of noticed that while I was singing. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool what you're doing here. I like that. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, yeah, I just want to mention our winner for the coffee. Oh, yeah? Um, the number I chose was 21 because we're all excited for it to be 2021. Yeah, we are. Um, and the person who I believe was closest uh, is Gene Fahey. So, Gene, if you are still what watching. What number did Gene pick? Gene picked 20. That's pretty close. Um, so, Gene, if, you if you're on here, please say hello. And... Um, and why don't you just go to alicehow.com and send me a message on the contact form and give me your address and your contact info, and we'll make sure we get that coffee out to you. Thank you to uh, Fair Trade Coffee Company for donating mm. that prize for you guys. And uh, with all these, uh, with our sponsors, we really are grateful uh, to them. But uh, get in touch if you're going to, rather than do the Starbucks thing, I don't think they need the money, but... Uh, somebody like uh, like our friend Arpy, who who does it on his own, and roasts his own coffee, and it's it's just as good. Uh, Actually, you know, it's better. It, it even better. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can you can support. We we really. I know he would appreciate. It, we'd appreciate it. Uh, besides us being able to give away, but uh, you can support him. So uh, you know, just look up. Uh, is it FairTradeCoffee.org? Yeah. FairTradeCoffee.org, and you can order some and. Uh, You'll be helping out the little guy and enjoying some some good Joe at the same time. Tell us what you got. I want to play Twilight. Twilight. Good old Twilight. Yeah, tell me a little bit about Twilight and how this came about. Because I feel really good that you allowed me into this song. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. And allowed. You did. You allowed me into That's it. That's an accurate. Really nice. <laughs> tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well. Part I, of the interview. I would say it definitely uh, qualifies as one of my points of destiny. Um in that when I met you, Freebo, I had just put out my EP. It was actually about to come out, rather. It's called You've Been Away So Long, and I'm sure many of you have heard it. Beautiful record. Um, it had a, ended up having a number one song on folk radio, Homeland Blues, which was um, totally unexpected and really exciting. But at that time, I, was, I had kind of just finished a project, and I wasn't really thinking that I was going to immediately start um, a new recording project, but I, I ran into you at Folk Alliance, and it just kind of took me on a new path. It like it just it revealed a, a new direction. I, I had an opportunity to go in, in working with you in the studio um, when you offered to produce my record, so I, I kind of got, I got going on writing again, which I hadn't been doing, you know, whenever you get into like recording mode, I feel like sometimes you can kind of stop writing, but it, it reignited that for me. And also, um, you had shown me some things on the partial capo. So I, I took that home and I was actually on a trip with my mom down in uh, Florida. We were uh, at the beach with a couple of friends of hers who own a home down there. And so I was like, the kid among like the grown-ups and so I got to go walk by myself a lot which I really enjoy in a in a beautiful warm place so I was just uh, actually biking up and down and up and down this road just like back and forth is like this flat uh, little dirt road and I was singing to myself because that's what I like to do when I start um, a song I often just sing to myself um, whatever comes to mind I've been doing that since I was a kid and um and I just, if I catch something good, it, like I'll, I'll try to remember it and go home you, and write it down. Do you remember, were you singing the, da, 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 were you singing that melody or I know Dirt, Dirt Road in the late afternoon, what, what came to you first? Do you remember? And was it on your bike? Yeah, I was on my bike. Um, and I think it was probably that first line, just I know a dirt road in the late afternoon. Because a lot of times a way that I will start writing, if I don't have something in mind, which I don't usually, uh, is 
I'll just kind of describe what I'm feeling in that moment, what I'm seeing or what I'm feeling, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think I'll just let that take me somewhere. And I don't have an expectation of where that's going to be. I just kind of open myself up to that possibility. Um, so that's kind of what happened. I, I know a dirt road in the late afternoon. And then that just kind of takes me to like, oh, well, then I ask myself like, well, what are you thinking about right now? You know, and then I think that that sort of goes to the next place from there. Um, but when I was like, you know, had had kind of a a basic structure of the song and a lot of lyrics written, that's when I brought it to you. And I said, hey, do you think you could help me? make this song better, and you certainly did. So. Okay. Well, I remember what I heard. I mean, obviously I heard a lot of wonderful stuff. I mean, I love your lyrics, and uh, I mean, they're very evocative. I, I, I wish I could uh, often, I mean, look, we all write from different perspectives, but the way you write your lyrics are just gorgeous, really beautiful poetry. Uh, but I remember hearing, and maybe you coming from the folk world, I, 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 I remember thinking it, it's really rambling a lot, and You'd start. I come. I hear a good idea, but then I kind of hear it go and go, and after a while, it would lose me. So, uh, I guess I I kind of took up my role at first as as editor, saying, "Well, wait a second. This this is superfluous, and here's the meat. Here's what you're saying, and mm-hmm. kind of helped you say how about this and put this together, and then I think came up with the bridge or helped just made some suggestions. But yeah, I know it was the first time that you that you allowed a co-writer yeah. to come in because it, when, look when we do this it's very precious stuff to us yeah. you know, our creativity is very yeah, it's, tender it's really and, personal and very personal so yeah. the fact that you allowed me in you know meant a lot to me because mm-hmm. you've never done that before and i know you're resistant to it but i and for folks out there i mean i i, I admire you but i think i admire anybody and i know i had to come to it myself too at what point do you hold on to something mm-hmm. that you feel is really val- valuable? Mm-hmm. And at what point do you let go and think, well, yes, maybe, what I, but maybe somebody else has something more valuable. Yeah. Maybe, the, and then before you know it, you get into a co-creation, and and those can be incredible. And the fact that you did open yourself up means a lot. I mean, since then we've done some really wonderful work yeah. together, and I, I I know that a lot like that last song, "No Place Like Home." I mean. Uh, that's totally a cool right I'd never have written that song without Cameron right. Taylor good yeah. it just wouldn't have happened yeah. you know and I had a lot of ideas but man her ideas just really sprung other ideas of mine and so I appreciate yeah, that yeah thank you and I, I I give myself credit for letting that happen too because it was really scary for me at first but um, you're a great collaborator Freebo you're a very <laughs> yes person so it's it's easy to I can be a little bit more like, no, I don't like that idea. Um, oh, and we I know all that. can. We but, all can, absolutely. But, you know, we have our our preferences and tendencies in the ways that we write. And I think, you know, you and I do write in really different ways, yeah, but absolutely. that doesn't mean that we can't um, help each other kind of reach greater heights in, in each of our respective writings. So, and it's true, um, I was definitely like an over... I would over explain everything in my songs, I think. And I've really been able to like become more comfortable with saying less and just like trust that if I say it really well in fewer words that it will come across the way I want it to. Yeah. Which is a song. I mean, a song is a four minute structure. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, and it's, it's, it's pretty, it yeah, it's, it's tight. Yeah. Um, that's so. what's so challenging about yeah. it. Yeah. And what's so satisfying when you get a really good line because it's like, oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. exactly what I wanted to say. Yeah. Um, and Jean, I'm so glad that you are enjoying the show. And she picked 20 because it's her anniversary date. Oh. 820 is also my brother's birthday. So that's really cool. And I'm happy we'll be sending you some coffee, Jean. Glad you guys are all still here. We, yeah. We're um. We seem to have kind of a steady, steady quantity of people here. So glad you're enjoying the chatter. <laughs> Twilight.
to the right, twisted and wild. To my left is the sea, like a glimmering eye. Well, I'm not the first one, and I won't be the last who's come to this crossroads and breezed on past with my destination. One foot on the gas as the yellow light turns And there's nothing like being alone at twilight The ocean and I each approach in high tide Held aloft all the waves of my pride I'm better off walking alone at twilight a deep breath he's hoping I will but my mind keeps on racing till I'm far out of sight at the end of So I work till I'm tired, then I lay down to rest And that takes just a bit of this weight off my chest But the years stretch before me, I admit that it's true This restless pursuit is what I'm called song then I'll, then I'll take a song okay if you insist what should I play uh hmm I don't know you got lots of choices you know, got I sure new do songs, got old songs you got covers you hmm. got, oh I know what I can do just why why you're thinking of that what watch this Oh it's, yes! It's, it's, it's Christmas. Oh my God! It's time. It's time because you can. You guys, special surprise. Why are you here? It's, it's, I mean, only because I can do it. Wait, I gotta. Are you gonna? 
bring it in here or should no, I? No, I can't. I oh, <laughs> okay. Right He's on here. a tight leash. All right. I got a. Oh, wait. I could sort of maybe kind of, but not, not can't quite fit in here. You're going to have to. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Anybody recognize that? Let's see if somebody picks up on that. I want to know if anybody recognizes that. But here's something for your holidays. <laughs> Some folks did recognize that. Really? Let's yep. see. Uh, there, the comments are a little farther up. Uh, but yeah, I want to see that. There were several Peter and the Wolf. Ah, oh, very good. Yes. Comments. Peter good job, and the everybody. Wolf. Um, Serge Prokofiev. Oh wow! Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see the Christmas lights. Don't you love that? It's a little Christmas tree. The Christmas tuba. Christmas tuba. All right, folks, we will uh, end with a couple more songs here. Oh, and before you play that song, watch this out. we got one more little surprise for you. Bad luck. 
lucky year. Yes. Bad luck all of my days, yeah. <laughs> Fade out, Primo. <laughs> oh my God, yep. Maddie, <laughs> you, you write. Maddie's commenting with the next verse. <laughs> I didn't feel that that verse in particular applied so much to me, although I thought maybe I could tweak it. Um, wine and women is all I crave. Yeah, that that's not, not quite appropriate. Not, for, not uh, quite. Yeah. But, you know, and it turns out that Albert King couldn't read. We just found that I out know. recently. He couldn't read, he couldn't Jimmy write. Jimmy Vivino told us that. Yeah, yeah. God, that is, that is really... But he did all right. He did. He, he sure, sure did. He sure could play the guitar hey, and sing the he, blues. He had you know the, that? yeah, the music. Music knows. Yeah. No boundaries. Um, yeah. Hey, thanks for that, Debbie. Glad you're watching, and uh, thanks for yesterday. Appreciate everything. Working well. Inside, folks. The show is inside live. So. Yeah, we just want to let you know that, that we appreciate you tuning in and watching this. And uh, we do this every Wednesday. Uh, next Wednesday is our friend uh, Jeff Fielder from Seattle and uh, Alice. In and his wife, Tecla Jeff. Waterfield. The mm -hmm. two of them have, have put together a duo. Jeff is a really good friend of mine from my years in Seattle. And he's played on all of my records. And I just think he's an incredible musician on every he level. Is. He's honestly like top five guitar players ever. For me and for Freebo, I think I've I've converted you as well, as friends that we have. Um, I'll put them in my top ten. Okay, okay. well you know yeah. more people. Than I me. do. That's right. <laughs> I have to be fair to the Jeff ones is I great. Before Jeff. Um, he and his wife have a, a beautiful duo. They've been putting out some music. So next week, that's that's going to be the show. Next week, the last show of. 2020. 2020 oh my god and we're gonna be back in january don't worry we're not going we anywhere yeah we've got we're gonna be back at norms uh for a couple of things and uh, at some point we're gonna have some of the folks we had on early on like lawrence juber uh, we just did a very nice session over at his house uh, a couple of days ago it was beautiful uh, thank you for that lawrence and we'll probably have albert lee back on and jack williams and some of the people we had early on uh and we've got a lot more folks coming up uh I'm so fortunate to know uh, so many uh, really wonderful musicians, whether they be guitar shredders or blues players, singer-songwriters. Uh, there's some interesting folks, and, uh, and Alice and I know a lot in common, a lot of wonderful people from the folk world. So we're going to keep it coming every Wednesday and uh, tell your friends. And, and you know, it seems like this. he does play with Mark Lanigan. That's exactly right. Jeff, sorry, Jeff Fielder does play with Mark Lanigan, and he plays with Amy Ray of the Indigo Girls. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I feel like this was really fun tonight, and we should do this again for you, Bo. Yeah. Just well, uh, we, we not having a guest, and, and thank you guys for your comments about the show. I'm glad that this little experiment worked for you all as much as it did for us. Yeah. I like that. <sighs> Isn't an old woman named after my mother? <laughs>
wasn't fully aware of the thirst I had. Now that I know, baby, I can't go back. I'll never be the same. You can. I know that one day we'll be out of time I could count all the days left before the goodbye Nobody knows it better than I But I don't want to live that way You can run Thank you. Beautiful. What are you gonna do for your last song, Freebo? Well, let's let's uh, leave him on an up note here. Uh, yeah. Oh. oh. thank you, Don. Appreciate that. And thank uh, you, Ed. Glad you're watching for the first time. <laughs> thank <laughs> That's you, Debbie. Enough. Yeah, James. Um, James is asking about my. I started a new video series because. 2020 and what else am I going to do with my life so every Friday I'm going to put up a ballad <laughs> um, that I will be performing from my bathroom because it has good acoustics and so I'm calling the series bathroom ballads and you should subscribe to me on YouTube so that you get notified when I post the next video but they'll be up on Instagram and Facebook as well so I'd love if you'd follow me in those places so that you can see the, the next installment. There's one up already, but so the, the key is that each one is a Joan Baez inspired like old English ballad because I know so many and I never perform them. And so I thought, what the heck? Yeah. The last one was called Mary Hamilton. I'm, I won't give away what this week <laughs> is gonna be, but I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> and Alice Alice performs uh, in the bathroom uh, sometimes if in a bathrobe I saw. No, don't give it away. They oh, have to okay. go see it. Well, I just just wanted to know, somewhat provocative, but yes. <laughs> and Lillian, uh, you asked about what kind of mics these are, and glad you did. Uh, these are Audio Technica mics, and uh, we're very grateful that Audio Technica gave us these mics. Uh, we have these two dynamic mics, and we also have a mic up here. There's a room mic that uh, really picks up everything, and uh, we're we're really grateful uh, for their help as well as this amplifier, this is a Fishman loud box, and Fishman also has been very gracious uh, and uh, in, in, in supporting us. Uh, they gave us this amp. Uh, I had one, and Alice had one, and then they gave us another one. It's actually a guitar amp, but it works great for bass. I've got it at a very low level, but I actually have an XLR coming out of the back, and I have that fed into a little board over here. It's just a, an eight-channel uh, PV board we've got everything pretty much going into the board mm -hmm. then i mix it to some headphones and then alice sends it out with uh uh obs or restream whatever we have to be various using forms of witchcraft yeah but but the point is that these are audio technical mics and i'm grateful to them for sponsoring us and fishman and to cordial cables uh and uh and, and thanks to Alert the Globe and Rock Cellar Magazine for also putting up our video, our show on their pages. We really appreciate that. And thank you all for watching. It's been just a real pleasure for us to get to know you guys and 
and get to have you here um, sharing this time with us every week. Uh, we're, we're really grateful. Um, we wanted to start this show ever since March when the, the lockdowns really started and we talked about doing um, you know a weekly show with a special guest mm-hmm. and this is our first time doing it without a guest and really just getting to hang out with you guys for like a full two plus hours. So yeah, thank you great. for staying with us the whole time. I'm getting kind of hungry, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I'll tell you what, but I'm gonna do this last song and then we're gonna do one together as an encore. And uh, we don't usually do this on the show as we do with other people, but since you're here and we're here, uh, we're gonna do it for you. And somebody, uh, somebody just kind of mentioned some of the reference to that uh, old woman named after my mother, and there's a little hint, but stay tuned, folks. Alice, this is for you. Wait, what are we doing? Well, we're going to do If Not Now, When. <laughs> and then we're going to do You Know What. Oh, You Know What. You Know What. Um, I'm glad the sound is good tonight. Yeah. Yeah, we're using actually two iPhones as the B cameras, and the, the main one is a Panasonic camera, Mark, if, uh-huh. you're, if you're asking about that. Lillian, uh, you're welcome. And Don Kloon, happy holidays to you, my friend. And thank you for those uh, lovely pictures. Number 88, my buddy Don Kloon uh, was a, uh, an athlete. University of Pennsylvania broke all the records, uh, for pass catching records, and was in pen relays and then went on to play with the New York Giants and the uh, Seattle Seahawks you know, way back in the beginning. And uh, we've been good buddies. He's been a wonderful supporter of mine. Appreciate it, Don. We, Play music together when we get together. I want to see uh, you guys play football. I think we're both past that. <laughs> yeah, I might need we, to call an ambulance. No, when we first met, we used to throw the football around at Frisbee and, you know. Ooh, if, if Terry Mutchler says the sound is good, then we are. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Terry, you think the sound, that's great. <laughs> I'll take some credit for that and uh, give the rest of the credit to Alice. It's a, it's a group effort. Okay, uh, and this is, you know, uh, 2020 is just about over and 2021 is coming bring up. Bring it and on. Bring it on. And, you know, there's uh, all these uh, pent, this pent up, oh, for some of us, pent up rage and <laughs> pent up anger and pent up what ifs and, and maybe and, Oops. oh, I got to do this. And, well, 2021 is going to be the time it's all going to work out. So I send this song out to all of y'all, as they say in the South plural of you and uh, this song is called If Not Now When with a little surprise in the middle of it goes just like this ready Alice uh, and does and Alice does look marvelous this evening doesn't she why did, thank you did you put on some sort of special makeup or something or? I can't share my secrets oh yeah I offered to do yours but you declined <laughs> I did <laughs> alright here we go ready <laughs> I was a young boy I had these dreams Time didn't matter So it seemed Now I'm still a dreamer Like you was back then Time came screaming yeah. Not now Wait, my camera one out Hunters are hard Don't ask me questions while I'm playing the bass. They've broken down the plan. So many words. And what if I can't? I'm a fear of the captive. Caged in a pen. Joke, I'm like, I hear you playing drums. It's not now when. It's not 
not be who I can't pretend Oh no, cause I know it's true I make this vow I'll swear it Amen My time is now <laughs> well, I pulled out of Pittsburgh and rolling down that eastern seaboard. Good. Got my diesel wound up and she's running like never before. There's a speed on ahead, I'm right, but I don't see a cop in sight. Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home. Somebody picked up the bridge. All right. Well, uh, thank you, guys. Thank you all. I think we'll finish off with our, our, our big closer. This is the encore. I can just hear you in my mind clapping. Gotta make sure I'm in tune here, Alice, for this. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, thank you, guys. And... Um, Thank you so much to everyone who has sent us a tip. We so appreciate we it. We really do. Thank um, you so if much. If you are in a position to send us a donation, think of it as your your ticket for tonight's show. Um, please do go ahead and send that to Venmo or PayPal. Um, if you look me up on either Venmo or PayPal, it's Alice Howe Music. Uh, you can also enter my email address into PayPal and I'll come up. It's alice at alicehow.com. 
or look me up as Alice Howe Music. It's uh, it's right here. Show us some love with the tip, paypal.me slash Alice Howe Music or Venmo at Alice Howe Music. And you can find all of our recorded music on all streaming platforms or if you if you would like to support us by ordering CDs, you can do that on each of our websites. Um, I think I saw some of CD Baby. Oh, yeah. Okay, they're still doing a few I have vinyl. Yeah. Um, if you want to order vinyl, um, you can do that on my website, alicehow.com. This is my record that came out last year that Freebo produced. And nice we, are, we are hard at work on another one. I'm really excited about that. So. Well, we're going to leave you with this uh, last tune. And again, we just can't thank you enough for tuning in. And, and we do wish you happy holidays. Be safe. You know, it's not time to let your guard down. I, I know I'm preaching to the choir. But uh, it's easy to do it. it. It just takes just a minute. There was just a, a really heartbreaking article, front page of the L.A. Times, about a, uh, a guy who, uh, who got it and uh, you know, was on a ventilator and, and, and died and just broke his family's hearts. And uh, it's happening with a lot of people. Uh, we don't all happen to have the, the kind of money or the, uh, uh, the circumstances where we can get you know, first-rate health care right off the bat like uh, some of our leaders seem to be able to get after a couple of days they're, they're healed and then other, others die. So part of the inequities that uh, are going on will always go on. All we can do is take care of ourselves. So please do take care of yourselves. And, uh, and we will see you uh, next week with Jeff Fielder and his lovely wife. Tecla and, Waterfield. And, uh, and what, what are we calling it? Uh, Waterfield and Fielder. Well, that's not really their band name. But Fielder and Waterfield. <laughs> their last thing. names are, they both have the word field in them. I feel yeah. like they should come up with a band name that's... Fielder and Waterfield. Or Fielder the Fields. Fields. Yeah. The Fielders. So uh, we showed this picture earlier of uh, Bonnie and me, and uh, they were wonderful days. And, and back in those days of the duo, Bonnie would bring a tune to me. And uh, I said, here, learn it. <laughs> and of course I would, but in the process, I guess I couldn't help doing my thing and, you know, throwing some suggestions. And uh, I, I feel good about my part of the music in those days. And this is one of those songs where I, I feel that uh, I did have a part of the arrangement in it. And, uh, and that arrangement found its way onto the record. And uh, we played it and sung it together hundreds of times. And I just recorded uh, about a year ago my own version. I'm going to send that out uh, in singles sometime uh, in single version sometime in 2021 and when Alice and I started working together we turned it into a into a duet so this is our version of John Prime's beautiful song Angel from Montgomery Just
Thank you all so much. Uh, wishing you happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And we'll see you next Wednesday and the week after that. Yeah. Love you all. Thank Love you. you all. Really, thank you so much. Good night, Have everybody. Good